Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video, we're going to be looking at what is overdetermination. Now, overdetermination is a description of a relationship between causes and an effect where multiple causes are independently sufficient to explain the same event. In other words, an event is overdetermined if it has multiple causes, any of which would have been sufficient to cause that event. Note, this is the definition of overdetermination for analytic philosophers, which is what we're going to cover for most of the video. We will have a quick addendum at the end talking about how it's used uh, both in psychoanalysis and in continental philosophy. So if you're looking for that definition, stay tuned and we will get there. But for now, an effect is overdetermined when it has two or more causes, any of which would have caused the event on their own. So as you see, we have two causes that cause a single effect. But if we only had one cause, that effect would still happen, or if we only had the other cause, that effect would still happen. Therefore, our original effect is overdetermined. It has multiple sufficient causes. This is not to be confused with scientific underdetermination, which is where the empirical evidence justifies multiple different theoretical interpretations. Check out our series on underdetermination for more on that and the different kinds of scientific underdetermination. So, what does overdetermination really mean? So some examples of a situation that's overdetermined might include two people attempting to open the same door from different sides at the same time, one pushing, the other pulling. Many people have experienced this. You go to pull on a door at the same time that someone else is from the other side pushing on that door. The door opens, but the opening of that door is overdetermined by both of those causes. Either you pulling the door or that person pushing the door would have led to the door being opened. Since they both occur at the same time, the opening of the door is overdetermined. It has multiple sufficient causes. But you also might imagine someone deciding what to buy for lunch between, say, a burger and a salad. They learn at the very same moment that the burgers are rancid and absolutely horrible and that the salad is free. Either piece of information would have been sufficient to cause them to pick the salad. They would take a free salad over non-rancid burgers and a costly salad over rancid burgers. Their choice is therefore overdetermined. Receiving both of those pieces of information at the same time, either of which would have led them to choose the salad, means that they are overdetermined because there are two effects or two causes that lead to the same effect them going and buying a salad. Overdetermination is commonly used when discussing the relationship between mental and physical states. So this is due to the challenge that physical behaviors appear to cause, be caused both by our physical states, our brain states, our neurons, etc. What is the reason that you are holding that cup? Well, because there are neurons firing in my brain that are telling my muscles to tighten and hold a particular cup. But also by mental states. What is the reason you're holding that cup? Well, because it has water in it and I might want to drink it or I'm about to drink it. That seems to be a mental explanation for me holding the cup, but it also seems to be a physical explanation for me holding the cup. So some particularly mind-body dualists often claim that physical states are overdetermined, that either the mental state or the physical state is sufficient to cause a given action. So they're using overdetermination here to explain how you can have two causes for the same effect. The, the effect of me holding the cup is caused both by my mental state that I want to drink of water and by the physical state of the neurons firing and leading me to tighten my muscles. Now, some philosophers object to the idea that overdetermination is possible at all. They claim that any effect would have been different with a different cause. The door would have opened differently if it was pushed instead of pulled. 
Others object specifically to mental or physical overdetermination, arguing that mental states would not cause behaviors without the physical states as well, and so are not actually sufficient causes, or you're messing up the causal chain. If there weren't neurons firing, I wouldn't be holding the cup no matter what the beliefs in my mental states were. Now, overdetermination, as I mentioned, is also found in Freudian psychoanalysis, where it's used to describe multiple factors, including daily events, unconscious desires, and deeply repressed trauma, which can all cause and influence our dreams. And that connection of these kind of contradictory causes leading to one coalescing effect that we try to make sense of. In continental philosophy, overdetermination is closely associated with Louis Althusser, who builds on this Freudian notion, using the word overdetermination to instead describe the state of a subject, an individual, a government, etc., which is caused and created by many, often contradictory factors at the same time. A particular country is overdetermined as it's made what it is in this moment by many contradictory and separate forces, such as its religion, its industries, its place in the world, hierarchy of power, etc. There's no one easy, sufficient cause to explain what caused China or what caused America. There's not one thing. It has to be overdetermined by so many different, separate, often contradictory or at least intention causes coming together. And so when Althusser and often continental philosophers talk of underdetermination, that's what they're talking about. A full explanation of that view is definitely the subject for another video, just to kind of make that distinction and separate that out, that most of what we've been talking about here is an analytic philosopher's take on overdetermination, not the continental take. What do you think? Can events be overdetermined? Can both mental and physical states cause the same behavior? Give me your thoughts in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.